Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about casting, continuing our discussion, this time talking about reinterpret cast. So as you recall, we've talked about static cast and dynamic cast in previous videos, so make sure you check those out. But with that said, let's go ahead and see what reinterpret cast is all about here. So our favorite website, CPP reference here, let's just go ahead to the search bar, search for reinterpret cast, first listing here, and here we go. So you can read this and read through some of the examples here, but the real important part to understand about reinterpret cast is it's one of the last casts that is tried when we're trying to cast some data type. Again, the advantage of C++11 is we're explicitly listing out the type of cast that we are attempting or intending to do. The C style casts, again, just sort of try something until it works anyways in the C++ compiler. And depending how we're using those C style casts, we might just be treating a certain block of data as a set of bits. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at an example here just to make this a little bit more concrete. I'm going to go ahead and bring up my uh, drawing pad here because I think it'll be useful as well. So let's just go ahead and start off with a simple example here. So I've got something prepared here. And it's sort of the classic. So what I've got here is pi here, 3.14, uh, and treating it just as a floating point value. And what I'm going to do here is just do the typical C style cast here. So we'll go ahead and see how this works. And then I've got the reinterpret cast. And I'll go ahead and explain this sort of mess and why there's the ampersands and so on um, within this. So let's go ahead and just compile this and give this a run here, see what the results are. Okay. So with our C style cast here at line 21, we get the value three. Now the reinterpret cast, we are saying, hey, let's go ahead and whatever's at this address, let's cast it to an int pointer, and then we'll dereference it so that we get a value back. So we're literally getting back some integer value or integral value of whatever pi is or 3.14f the floating point value represents. And then in this case, well, if I'm just treating the actual bytes here as, well, a float, which we know pi already is, then I'm able to get 3.14 back. Okay, so again, just a little bit of a review of what's going on here. It appears that the C style cast here was able to find something, um, and in a way it's able to treat the uh, primitive types and find some uh, implicit uh, conversion that it could do here and just truncate out 0.14 and just somewhere in the hierarchy just say okay yeah 0.14 uh, we'll get rid of that and just keep the integral part no problem okay so again the c style cast here is going through some sort of hierarchy here maybe starting with static cast first and saying hey can i do that if it can't then maybe it's trying a uh, dynamic cast or maybe if it's just one of the primitive types, again, it's just going down this hierarchy until eventually one of the last steps is reinterpret uh, cast here. That's going to try. But it looks like it found something that worked well enough and again, just said, hey, treat this as three. We know how to uh, do that. Uh, so uh, that, that worked there. Okay, but again, at this step here, at 24, we're literally with reinterpret cast saying, okay, uh, just treat this uh, address here where pi lives, give me a pointer to it, and an int pointer holds, well, what it's going to interpret as an integer, okay? And if I want the actual value back, well, then I dereference it. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like without the uh, dereferencing, just so you can uh, see what this uh, prints out. And again, we can just go ahead and see, well, you know, nothing super interesting here. We are actually getting the address uh, here of pi. So let's go ahead and just uh, print that out uh, just so, you know, this is super explicit here, uh, address of pi, or sometimes I like to do uh, with the parentheses here. And then let's go ahead and run it here. So again, you can see that, you know, if we're just getting the address of a pointer, it doesn't really matter too much. But if we're saying, hey, you know, actually dereference this thing, but treat it as an integer, well, whatever 3.14, uh, the floating point representation, which again is going to be different than integers, is going to give you a uh, somewhat strange uh, value here, okay? So I'll go ahead and um, let me just go ahead and get rid of this line. So I think you get the point here that this is sort of maybe not the intended behavior. But in order to make this a little bit more concrete, I think it's useful to maybe come up with an example of where should I use reinterpret cast or where could I use it, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at another example that I have prepared here for you. 
And what I'm going to do here is I've got this structure here called game state. Okay, now let me go ahead and split my screen here just so you can see what that struct is. I'll keep this towards the top here just so you can uh, you know, get a feel for uh, this actual structure here. Okay, and let's go ahead and move my window down here just a little bit here so we can see what I'm going to show you what is going on. So this game state structure here is just some structure you can imagine having in a game. And I'm using a game example because that's what I'm sort of familiar with, but really any sort of um, you know, system where you've got a chunk of memory that you need to write. So for instance, let's go ahead and just represent game state here. And I've got, you know, four bytes for the level, and I'm just going to label uh, four bytes here. And the health itself, also four bytes because it's an integer. And maybe the points that the player has scored, also four bytes. And then I've got a bool for the uh, game complete here. Game complete. And a, for the boss defeated, or maybe some mechanism that's important for you. Okay, one byte, one byte. And the color doesn't matter here, it's just how I'm representing things. So anyways, this is the uh, actual struct here. And it might get padded, you know, in an extra two bytes. If you've been watching this uh, series here, there might be two bytes here, but you know, we don't care about that extra space for now. But I just want to be explicit that that's there. Okay, so Oftentimes what I'm going to want to do in some sort of game or environment is just take this data here and write it out. And if I want to be efficient, I can just go ahead and write this data out in one write. Okay. Uh, meaning to say that I don't want to, if I'm opening up some file stream here, like you might do, uh, F stream, this is sort of the pseudocode, right? You might write uh, the game state dot level in one go, and then you'd write the game state uh, dot health in one go, etc. I'll move out of the way here. But this is really inefficient because I'm doing two writes here and maybe a, a flush in between to write out that data. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. So typically we just want to treat this when we're reading in as, hey, I have this bag of bytes here. Okay, this grouping here of uh, what's going to be a total of four plus four plus four, that's 12 plus two more, 14 uh, bytes of information. And I actually know what the structure is, right? I know this is my sort of file format. This is how I'm structuring my data. So I can just read this in as one uh, collection of data, okay? So let's go ahead and set up this game state with a structure here. And I've just populated some random values, 66 for the level, 100 for the health, 999 for the points, and the game's not complete and the uh, boss hasn't been defeated, okay? And we can change these values if we want here. Okay, so now I want to allocate the actual memory for this. So what I'm going to do here, and because a char is just one byte of information, and at compile time, I know how big this game state is going to be. It's probably going to allocate 16 bytes for me, but I'll let the compiler figure that out on this architecture here. And I'll just have this structure. So this is where I want to store information here. Okay, and now I want to go ahead and just sort of optimally do my one read call. So I'm going to write this idea here. So the key idea is that we're going to do one read from disk to get all our data. Okay, and that's the idea here. Okay. That's a simple idea. This is a use case where I can think of where you might want to use reinterpret cast. Otherwise, you know, I haven't uh, used it. I can't say I've used it very frequently uh, other than for this uh, case here. Okay, so how am I going to load in this data? Well, again, let's assume, you know, we've read in this game state uh, object from disk here, okay? Or, or maybe we're doing something like a read call. In this case, I'm just using mem copy, which is just going to copy from some source into a destination, some number of bytes here, okay? So I've got our game state object. Now I've just allocated the, uh, this on the stack, but you could imagine reading it in from a file here. And I've populated it into bag of bytes here. Now again, all we know at this point is that we just have a collection of data, right? This was just one read that populated the structure. And now I actually want to do something with it. So my options are, I could just sort of set up this data in this way and just say, okay, let's dereference the first uh, item here in this bag of bytes. And let's go ahead and 
think about what's going to happen here. Because again, bag of bytes itself is an address. It's a char of some sort. So let's go ahead and dereference it. And I happen to get B here, okay? Because I have 66 here in my uh, level here, okay? Now, what is uh, 66? Well, I have my ASCII table here. And well, 66, if we find it, it is in fact the letter B, if you can see on this table where I'm waving my cursor. Okay, so why is this important or why am I showing you this? Well, again, I'm just interpreting these bytes as characters. So, you know, there happen to be, um, you know, for, for an int on my architecture, four bytes of information populated with a 66, but we're just treating it as a char. So what we could do is go ahead and say, hey, you know, don't just um, dereference this uh, value in this array here, but let's go ahead and treat it instead as a uh, int pointer, okay? Uh, so that it's a integer, and then dereference that value. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this. And this time we get 66. Okay, so again, let me undo this change. That might have happened a little bit too fast for folks. I get B, but again, this time, if I cast the appropriate type int here, then I get, well, the value that we've populated, 66. Okay, because again, remember, looking at our structure, this is supposed to be a four byte integer here. Okay, so we've got the correct uh, piece of information back. Now, this here looks pretty ugly what's going on. And if you're just looking at this code on line uh, 37 here, with this cast that's going on, this sort of C style cast, this works, right? I'm saying, hey, interpret this as a uh, integer pointer and then dereference that. But it's it's pretty ugly. And um, again, you know, um, it's unclear uh, what exactly our intent is here. So that's where I can see reinterpret cast being used. I'm going to uncomment this and show you how to uh, read in this data. It's a little bit more clear. And again, if you are, say, um, uh, reading in some data, then this can be a little bit more clear here. So I've got my bag of bytes. I want to interpret it as an int star, int star, int star, bool, and bool. And if you look carefully at this, this matches the format that I've got here on the right, right? This was, I'm just going to label these int 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 uh, b for bool here and b for bool uh, in our data structures okay uh, now you know when looking at this code i feel like i at least have a chance of understanding what's going on it's explicit that there's a cast going on it's not just some you know weird uh, pointer d reference and again i'm doing the same sort of trick that we learned about before where i have my bag of bytes here and now i'm just offsetting from the start here uh, by four, eight, and so on. And in fact, just to make this code a little bit more uh, portable, I should do size of int and maybe, you know, size of int times two, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So let's go ahead and run this and see if we're able to get our game state data back. And in this case, we are. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, close this uh, window above. I think we know our, our structure here. We're getting 66, 100, 99, so that matches here and false and false, which is zero and zero. Let's just go ahead and because zero can be a common thing to show up um, in our code and in uninitialized memory, change these to true, and you'll see that we get ones here. Okay, so this is working. I feel like I have a chance of this working. I feel like it's maybe a little bit more, um, you know, portable in this way of just maintaining the code. And that's one of the ideas of reinterpret cast. And again, this is where I can kind of see myself using this type of thing. Now, another case where you're probably going to have to think about using reinterpret cast is when you're using uh, void pointers, for instance, uh, where you don't know the actual type. That's the other sort of case of, hey, I just have a collection of bytes here and I need to reinterpret it. I think this is a little bit more concrete here and how um, I might use this sort of thing um, and have used it. Um, so hopefully that was useful to you folks here. All right, folks, I hope that was an interesting lesson. I hope that taught you something about reinterpret cast. Again, it's one of these things where you have to be a little bit careful if you're casting around data a lot, but on occasion, it really does have a use uh, and it and comes in handy, as you can see in this, um, this particular case. You know, if you're just doing one read of information that can save you a lot of processing versus having to uh, read in the data, just read it all in at once, and then you can reinterpret the bytes and assign things and populate your structures um, as you need here. Now, before I let you go, though, I just want to go ahead and show you yet yeah, one more example here. Um, you know, in this particular example, I showed you just you know, reinterpreting the bytes one at a time. 
again, this is going to be sort of wasteful um, to, to do this if you have some big data structure and if that data structure is going to change. In fact, it's probably better just to do something like this. So let me go ahead and comment out our code at the uh, top here, this printout here, and just show you that we can essentially have the same thing if you're reading in a blob of memory. Again, to just say, hey, you know, create this game state object, reinterpret it as some game state, uh, that has these five uh, fields uh, for our bag of bytes. And then if we run this here, which I'll go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and save this, clear out our terminal, run it. And again, you can see the same values that we had uh, before here. So again, that's the same idea, whether you're doing this uh, one at a time, you're just saying, hey, I have this collection of bytes, uh, pack it into this structure and just let it work. So I hope that helps make things uh, concrete before we sign off here um, and you understand that example. So again, thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed this uh, digression into casting and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Make sure you join our community in the description uh, below if you want to get into more discussions. Uh, I'm looking forward to growing that. And with that said, I'll look forward to seeing you folks in the next one.